Pirate Nation. Welcome to this edition of Pirate Nation News. Today is September 13, 2019. I am Maddie Lambden, and this is my co-host Paige Thomas. Hey Maddie, did you know that today is not only September 13, but also Friday the 13th? And there's a full moon tonight. So it's Friday the 13th, we have a full moon, and we play Madison for the Little Brown Jug. Talk about a crazy Friday, right? Anyway, this weekend is also the annual Ritley Run, Military Appreciation Night at the football game, and the Perry Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The Ridley Run, in honor of the late Perry coach Bob Ridley, will take place tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. If you have not yet signed up, you can still register for the 5K run and the one and a half mile walk tomorrow morning before the event takes place. Military Appreciation Night at the football game in the battle for the Little Brown Jug against Madison is tonight. Current members of the military and veterans will enjoy free admission with their military ID. During halftime, they will be invited to the field and they will be recognized for their service. Saturday night, Perry alumni will be inducted into Perry Hall of Fame. We have a short video featuring this year's inductees. This Saturday, nine new people are being inducted into the Perry Hall of Fame. John G. Dorco, a teacher from 1975 until 2011, is being recognized for his achievements in coaching. Mark T. Lomansny, a coach from 1977 until 1998, is being recognized for his achievements in coaching. Ray Phelps, class of 1983, is being recognized for his achievements in football. Jake New, class of 2004, is being recognized for his achievements in baseball. Kimberly Siegel, class of 2004, is being recognized for her achievements in basketball and softball. Lindsay Dorco, class of 2005, is being recognized for her achievements in swimming. Grace Andrews, class of 2006, is being recognized for her achievements in swimming. Kevin Siegel, class of 2008, is being recognized for his achievements in football, basketball, and baseball. And Daniel Jackish, class of 2009, is being recognized for his achievements in cross country and track. Be sure to check out their spots in the Hall of Fame and appreciate their various contributions to Perry High School. All those being inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend. What a huge honor. Next up, it's time to play The Masked Teacher. Let's find out who was voted off last episode. To vote, look for the Google link to help decide who to kick off next week. Hello, and welcome to The Masked Teacher. I'm your host, Katie Baranowskis, and here are your contestants. Last week, we asked the teachers what their gender was, the people voted, and the results are in. The Narwhal, Jason Kipnis, Antonio Brown, The Cat, and Charlie Brown. Please step forward. You are all safe this week. You may step back. The winner this week with 22.2% of votes is Echo 9. Congratulations, you may step back. This leaves the bottom three as Poindexter, the Honey Badger, and the Tasmanian Devil. The person going home this week with 5.6% of votes is the Tasmanian Devil. Let's see who's behind the screen. Hi, I'm Rez. Thank you for your time, Rez. Now, on to this week's question. What is your age? Too old. 38. 50. 51. I am 40. I'm 30 years old. 39. Double nickels. 44. Well, there you have it. 
Make sure to vote in the Google form listed in the description of this video for who you want to keep in. See you next week on The Mass Teacher. Poor Rez, she didn't even make it out of week one. Stay tuned for future episodes to see who gets revealed next. Perry Middle School created quite a stir this year when they banned all cell phones from school hours. Josh Korth provides us with more information on the new rule. So the question of like why to ban student cell phones. So like we generally aren't saying that we're banning phones. Um, it's a really easy way to kind of look at the issue. Essentially what we've done is just uh, limit their use um, to during the uh, educational day. purposes during the student day. Um, so the focus is less on the phones and worrying about the phones and more so on just giving the students the freedom to be present um, both with their teacher uh, and with their friends. So if they know they can't use them, it just frees them up to think like, okay, I can't use it, so, you know, here's the time, here's the way I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna focus on my teachers, and when I'm with my friends, I'm actually gonna focus on my friends. Do I support the new cell phone policy? Absolutely. Mr. Chisholm, Mr. Nisley came up with this policy, and I am a rule follower, so I'm gonna do what they tell me to do, but I do support it. Um, I think in the name of education and just for productivity in the classroom, kids being focused, they have their Chromebooks, they don't really need their phones, so I absolutely support it 100%. I think banning cell phones was a good idea because I personally don't have a cell phone and um, everybody else I know has one, they would all be like just staring at it doing absolutely nothing but staring at them. Uh, do I support the rule of cell phones? Um, I do support it for sure, but I also believe that there's a time and a place uh, to allow students to have their cell phones in class, whether it's for academics, um, in order to get stuff done. You know, th though we do have our Chromebooks, cell phones are always a nice option also. Um, and of course, just the personal issue, if they ever need to, you know, we don't know what's going on in their world, if they need to contact mom or dad or, you know, Aunt uh, Sally or somebody, they could, uh, you know, they always, they've been good about asking me for permission before using it, and I've always granted it. So, hasn't been a problem, I don't think it will be. The question was, what time do I miss my phone the most? And I say lunch because we're not learning, and it's a good time to contact our parents about anything. And there you have it. Next up, the elementary school is once again starting their Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. It is now called Torchlight, and Alexis Sexton is going to tell us more about it. Hey Pirates, the club formerly known as Big Brothers Big Sisters, now Torchlight, is looking for some new Big Brothers and Sisters. Let's see what they're all about. I'm Mrs. Darnell. I run the Torchlight Mentoring Program after school. I've been doing it for a long time. Torchlight is a mentoring program. It used to be Big Brothers Big Sisters and now they've changed it um, to Torchlight, but it's the same program. It's where elementary kids are matched with high school kids and they meet one Wednesday after school to just hang out, have snack, do homework, play games, and just be together. And we meet every Wednesday in the elementary cafeteria from 3.30 until 5 o'clock. We spend some of our time in the gym and some time in the cafeteria. Um, to apply for Torchlight, you can get an application at the high school office or you can come see me at the elementary school in room 212. Once you have your application filled out, you can just bring it to our first uh, training class that's the first Wednesday in October at 3.30. Thanks for watching, Pirates, and have a great Friday. awesome program, make sure to get an application soon. Finally, in sports news, Drew Schiano tied up some pretty awesome records against Riverside. Josh Korth shows us Drew in action. Drew Schiano on August 30th, week one against the Riverside Beavers, will throw for nine touchdowns and 353 yards. These stats will tie the OHSAA record for the most passing touchdowns in a single game. Let's dive in and see how it happens. 
quick pass out to Rizad. Rizad is going to go in. He's going to go in for the touchdown. 15-yard play. Drew Ciano to Anthony Rizad. As Anderson is the one to receive it here. He's going to go down the sideline. He's going to turn on the speed, and he's going to go in for a touchdown. 43-yard touchdown pass. On the four-yard line, Ciano fakes the handoff. He goes over the middle. It's a touchdown for the Pirates. Matthew Sullivan. Crosses down to Rosati. Rosati with a nice block there by Malone. Rosati inside the five. He's going to dive into the end zone. That's going to be a pirate touchdown. Cano, he's going deep. He has Rosati wide open. Rosati's going to catch it at the six, and he's going to go in for a touchdown. 24-yard touchdown play. Rosati. After the penalty, the Pirates set up first and 10 for the 49. Shiano's going deep. He has Rosati. He's going to touch it at the 22. And he is in for another Pirate touchdown for Anthony Rosati. That is Carry back, pressure coming on, Shiano able to elude it. He's going deep for Sullivan, and he caught it. Matthew Sullivan, his second touchdown reception, 28-yard strike for the Pirates. And Sullivan, all of the solid play on the team for week. Cristiano going across the middle. Devon Holbert has it. He holds it down, he makes a guy miss. He's going to go. He's down to the 30, into the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Devon Holbert, 41 yards. The wide receiver up top, and that's the way he's going. He's going for Holbert. Holbert's going to pull it down, touchdown, 20-yard touchdown strike. Drew Shiano, nine touchdown passes in this ball game. And Rosati, always the gambler, thanks to the nine conservative group. Awesome job, Drew. Hopefully, we break some more records against Madison tonight. And speaking of Madison, let's end with a little football hype video to get everyone pumped up for tonight's game. Go Pirates, and have a great weekend.